Welcome to the Extension Connection. You are joined today by Burley County Extension, myself, Amelia Dahl, and the 4-H Youth Development Agent. And Bruce Schmidt, I'm the Ag and Natural Resource Agent. Hi, um, welcome you to the Extension Connection. And we were just talking right before we went on air about how it is kind of tough to come back to work on the 5th of July. And like, Yes, <laughs> it's just like I, I today has been Monday and it's going to it mess feels me like up. Monday. Yeah. It feels like Monday. When I was driving into the studio, I drove by Kroll's. And when we lived in Fargo, Shaky Mondays was a big thing. And I was like, oh, it's Shaky Monday. Oh, it's not Monday. It's Wednesday, which is good because, you know, we're done with two days of the week. But also a Wednesday that feels like Monday just yeah. is not. Well, the, and just the whole 4th of July. And I trust you had a good 4th of yes, July. Yes, yeah. Um, you know, with the burn bands and the firework bands. It just wasn't the it was same. Exactly. You know. And, um, yeah, we didn't we didn't watch any fireworks. On the, we didn't we didn't go to the parade because it was so hot. So hot. We took the kids out for lunch and we went to a movie, mm -hmm. and then we went over to some friend's house to grill out. And okay. then I was laying in bed watching a rerun of Jimmy Kimmel last night. <laughs> well, now you 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 probably did get on July third uh, because you know the uh, Bismarck Larks had fireworks after their game and and the game went quite late. It was very very enjoyable and then last night we were able to take uh watch the uh the ones on the capitol grounds were they and, nice i heard them from yes, my house we didn't yes i i kudos to uh the city of bismarck and or whatever group uh puts that on uh very nice show a uh, large crowd which i guess i would attribute probably because it was the only show in town right so well and it was nice that mother nature's nature gave us a good douse of yes. rain to kind of wet things down when that started i i went outside and did a little rain dance not gonna lie because all of that moisture is just so important this time of year yes and you know again we're, we're still uh, we had our drought call again this morning, and uh, again, a lot of the areas did not receive any kind of moisture out of that. Uh, a lot of hit and miss, and uh, uh, a lot of new programs are, are still coming, uh, and drought assistant programs. And uh, I guess as far as that, I would just direct uh, those out there that are listening uh, to the NDSU drought website. Uh, we're working with the Department of Ag. Uh, Farm Service Agency, and we're trying to put everything into one spot so you can go, and then the links are, are off of that. So uh, check that out to get the latest information. Great. So, yeah, we're still in a drought, still not out of that. But you're always, uh, I, I went through the 87, 88 drought, and some of the old timers there said you're, you're never out of a drought until the next growing season. So we are in the drought. Uh, well, let's hope Mother Nature gives us as much snow as we got last year. Oh, that's tough. No? It's tough to wish for. Oh, I love snow. We, but we could spread it out instead of all having okay. it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then, and then if then it could wait forward. until after Christmas. Yes. Because I am driving home for Christmas, which is a good yes. 800 miles. So, yeah. you know, if... if if any of you out there listening have any special requests for Mother Nature, I'm sure that you have as much pull as we do with uh, what we get out of it. So, in addition to the droughts affecting our farmers, it's also affecting our yards. Yes, and and we have a, a new concern um, effective on uh, June 21st of this year. The North Dakota Department of Ag um, was was informed that our nursery stock across the state is infected with the Japanese beetle larvae and pupa stage. Uh, now this is devastating news because the Japanese beetle is one of the most destructive beetles. Uh, it well, can attack uh, more than 300 different species of plants. And that's just ridiculous. Yeah. And, uh, and it just obliterates them. Right. You'll, the thing that you're going to be looking for. Uh, first, we'll talk about on the plant. What you're going to be looking for on the plant, uh, because the beetle should be in the adult form. So it's going to be a skeletonized leaf. So you're going to have all the leaf eaten except that main tough veiny part. Because they're picky, apparently. Uh, well, yeah. Um, <laughs> I only and, take my leaves tender, thank and, you. And, you know, the ones to start looking at are going to be grapes, apples, crab apples, choke cherry. Uh, linden trees and turf. Now the problem with the turf, when it's dry like this, 
you know, our grass is kind of brown. Now the um, grub feeds on the turf roots. So it turns it's them brown. going to turn brown. So we may have them out there and not being, you know, aware of it. So Gross. That, yeah. So, <laughs> but the beetle um, is easy to identify. It's and, beautiful. Yeah, because it's going to be about a half inch long. It's going to have bronze wing and a green metallic um, head, head part, I guess would be the easiest yeah. way. I don't uh, know my entomology terms. Yeah. And um, again, it's going to have, um, uh, on the wings, it's going to have little white tufts. So it, it is a very... Uh, noticeable, especially that green metallic. Hey, we don't see any too too many metallic bugs up here nope. in North Dakota. Nope. Now, um, as far as I'm aware, uh, you know, we haven't had any calls or positive identifications in our office, uh, but we are to let the Department of Ag know uh, right away. Um, if you want to call them direct, it's 328-2232. And uh, but there again, we should have a positive identification before you contact them yeah. because uh, that is so key. And there is a wide range of insecticides, or you can use the old method, just squish them. Uh, it's kind you of just fun. Go around and just squish them all. Yeah, <laughs> like know, popping the bubbles in a. In yeah. a mailer, squish, squish, uh, squish. Are there gonna when you have them in your yard? Are you gonna have large quantities of them? Like if I find one, are there fifty uh, other ones you creeping know, around? Uh, I, I guess that that is that is um, probably not. Um, the other thing too is if you brought in bedding plants um, from our local anywhere that in the last two weeks. I think those would be the areas that I'd be most most concerned Read about, about. The, for them to show up first. Uh, the golf courses, the parks, uh, the nurseries, again, are putting out traps in their um, areas. So we're going to have a better idea of where they're located. So, um, yeah, just um, how fast they can repopulate. I, I, I'm going to have to do some more research on that also. All right. All right. Well, we are going to take a quick commercial break here. And then when we come back, we will wrap up our Japanese beetle discussion. Super Talk 1270 News Update. I'm Jim Walsh. Here's what's happening. North Dakota's Republican legislative leaders say a certain safety program aimed at lowering the risk of derailments involving crude oil is redundant and can be eliminated. House Majority Leader Al Carlson and his Senate counterpart Rich Wardner say the pilot program duplicates federal and industry inspections programs. A Muslim civil rights group is asking state and federal authorities to investigate an alleged assault in Fargo as a hate crime. The Minnesota chapter of CARE, the Council of American Islamic Relations, says two suspects were arrested after a Somali American was beaten early Sunday. A North Dakota agency has asked the developers of a proposed refinery in the eastern part of the state to provide more data to support its claims about emissions levels. The Bismarck Tribune reports the State Department of Health is reviewing the company's air quality permit application. North Dakota Game and Fish says the spring pheasant population index is down 14 percent from last year. A spokesman does say, however, the spring count doesn't necessarily dictate the hunting season for the fall. And your forecast for Bismarck, Mandan, surrounding areas, sunny and hot once again today with a high near 100 degrees. Partly cloudy tonight and tomorrow, low 67, high 91. 
Stay up to date online at supertalk1270.com. Right now, 79. The home for ABC News at the top of the hour is Super Talk 1270. Welcome back to the Extension Connection. You are joined today by Amelia Dahl and Bruce Schmidt of Burley County Extension. And right before the break, we were talking about the Japanese beetle. Right. And um, it has, like I said, it has been identified in the um, nursery stock across the state. And uh, so we're just, uh, again, getting the word out there. How severe it's going to be is, you know. Still up in the air. Yeah. And and it is interesting because uh, according to this uh, newsprint or or, um, fact sheet from NDSU, uh, last year in uh, pretty much Burley County, Morton County, uh, there was a positive Japanese beetle identified. And I didn't realize that. Yes. And uh, now the good news is, is they didn't reach high numbers. Uh, we were kind of just taking a look at yeah. the uh, life cycle. Yeah. And uh, the, the, the good news is, is um, we have one generation uh, and the eggs may take a full year. Um, and the other good news is most years when we have a cold winter, frozen soil, the grubs will freeze to death. Yeah, they said that in the northern um, areas that it may take up to two years for a generation to repopulate. So yep. in addition to all that snow, can we get a good ground get hardening a, freeze? Yeah. <laughs> And, and maybe that'll take care of some of our bowl issues. Yeah, also. man, we had. Uh, again, they, they are still. We are still getting calls on bowls, and uh, uh, boy, if the bowl would eat the beetle. Will we, they? I, no. Does the beetle uh, have any predators? Do I, you know? I'm guessing yes. There are going to be a few of our parasitic wasp, uh, but we don't have normal high numbers of the parasitic wasp. That's the one you know, uh, because people are. Actually, sometimes we spray them thinking they're the same as, as the wasps. The yellow like, jackets. Yes. So uh, I don't think, like I said, I, the biggest thing that we want to do is um, help get our gardeners, our homeowners, um, those people that are have been buying stock, just a general awareness. Um, some really good uh, websites out there uh, to get a, a positive ID uh, is going to be the key. And then once we know where they're located, uh, you know, we can help set people up with the uh, an insecticide uh, right. program. But we don't like to do a lot of needless spraying because that also takes out our predators. Healthy things. Healthy things, like, you know, so if you want to keep around. Right. So if you have a bug that you think may be a Japanese beetle, you can always bring it into our office. Yep. Or send photos. Um, yep. And uh, or uh, text it to us, uh, and then we can help ID, ID it. And, and again, we can. And if you're positive, um, again, the uh, North Dakota Department of Ag is is the agency that is. Um, surveying and plugging them into the maps and uh, their number is uh, 328-2232 and uh, that will let's just be aware out there and right. it's a shiny green metallic uh, with bronze wing beetle. again it doesn't look like a beetle you would expect to see in North Dakota right. I, I, right honestly it looks like something you would put on the end of a fishing line be a good interest i don't know if they would work for that but but it's shiny i mean mm-hmm. i feel like fish would be attracted to something exactly like fish are, are the queens of ooh shiny thing yeah. right so we talked about um spraying chemicals and that also means that you may have some chemicals laying around your house that we need to dispose of yes and- this is a program project safe send <clears throat> uh, i was going to look it up to see how many years it's been around but it's a has long time a long time and it is a good program because it was one that you can bring your unwanted pesticides to uh, a collection location. <coughs> and on Thursday, July 13th, which is next week, next week, you can take them to the Bismarck at 218 South Airport Road. That's 218 South Airport Road between the hours of 8 and noon. And... Uh, 
and that is the North Dakota Department of Transportation oh, facility. I was, I was wondering, what is so, at that address? Yes. Yeah. So um, to help you figure out wh what it is. And they will dispose of these chemicals at no charge. And, That's nice. Um, it is being, it's paid for by the chemical companies themselves. And uh, the only stipulation is if you're going to be bringing in more than 1,000 pounds, uh, now that'd be total. So, I mean, you could have 500 pounds of this and 500 so pounds is, of that. Isn't that a lot? That is a lot. Okay. Uh, <laughs> They would like you to contact, again, the Department of Ag directly so that they can make the arrangements Plan. for something that size. Yeah. Why would you have a 1,000 pounds of pesticide left over? You know, uh, like I said, I, I've worked with this program numerous, numerous years. And it always amazes me. Somebody will have bought a piece of property, and there's an old building on that. And in that is a 55-gallon drum of we don't know. Oh, and those are always the really good chemicals to have around your house. Yes. And <laughs> it's kind of maybe even leaking just a little bit. So, I mean, and that's the, you know, I mean, the difficult part is getting it loaded and, uh, you know, safely and without it right. resting out. Or, and yeah, be careful everywhere. out there. So, you know... Um, the good news is once you get it in your vehicle, you know, hopefully, again, secure it as best you can. Uh, but once you get to the Department of Transportation's facility, they do the onloading. Oh, that's nice. Yes. So they're going to have the equipment. Uh, they're going to uh, bag it, tag it and bag it, I guess you would want to say. Bag it, tag it. And, 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 and there is no... Uh, you you know again in some cases you may think well it's an illegal pesticide no questions are asked they just want to get them out of wherever um, I've I mean I heard of a story and, and it was the old DDT oh and that was really old but it was an old farmstead and it was in the basement and in the basement of the mm -hmm. house and they realized the real reason they realized that it was in the it was still in the original container. And, wow. Uh, so they brought it in with, you know, worried that they were going to get in trouble and no questions asked um, other than, wow. <laughs> we don't see this cool. very often. Right. <laughs> I bet the pesticide nerds got excited about that. Well, no, <clears throat> you know. Um, There's nothing wrong with being a nerd. No, that's true. So, again, uh, next Thursday, July 13th, uh, and the hours are from 8 to 12. And again, if you have questions, uh, there's a number of other locations for those listeners outside of uh, the Bismarck area. We've got uh, the next closest ones are going to be um, Ashley on uh, Wednesday on the 12th. And then on the 14th of head is Headinger. And uh, again, we can, if you've got more questions, if you're outside of the area, contact your local extension office or give our office a call and we can help you with. And what's uh, our office sites. number? Uh, 701-221-6865. Awesome. All right, so if you have questions about um, the Project Safe Send mm -hmm. or about the beetles, um, even if you have a bug that is you may not think is necessarily a Japanese beagle, beetle, but you need to know what it is in order to get rid of it, our office gets a lot of those. Right, and, and I guess we would just let you know, I mean, we're pretty good at IDing them. But if we can't, we have the ability to send it in. So we may not be able to give you an answer. It's not going to be instantaneous Instant. on some of those harder uh, bugs. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, and, and some of our office, you know, they really don't like spiders. Uh, so we may just send those in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you bring bugs in, please keep them in a closed container yes. and do not dump them out on the counter as i said we have some office staff that really don't like creepy crawlies brought in but uh we will definitely try to assist you um photos don't work as good as live specimens especially you know unless you can get a real good crisp photo but we need to oftentimes identify body parts, so even if you kill it, and you squish it. You squish it. It, it, it makes it a little more difficult, but we right. can work with it. So if you find anything out there, and weeds too, 
Bruce is the king of oh, weeds. I, I got two brought in this morning, and uh, uh, one is one's one's got me stumped. Oh, really? Yeah. But again, we have uh, we have a network of of specialists and other agents that, uh, with the use of um, the internet and uh, a little. Um, Photo, digital photo. We can put it on there. Figure out what it is. Send it around, and all of a sudden, before you know it, we've got 20 pairs of eyes looking at it instead of just one or two. Right. Yeah, I've noticed um, I, last week I came into the office and was talking to Bruce about I have a lot of field Biden weed coming up that I just cannot get rid of. Well, I think I found the cause because like half a block down, somebody's entire yard is field bindweed. And so part of me just wants to go down there and just spray it all because it keeps... I think there's probably you wouldn't want to do that. Yeah, but, probably. I mean, I you'd mean, like to. I would like. I said I would like to. Yeah. Part of me, but not all of me. Yeah. So yeah. go in at night. Right. No, I will not be stealth spraying <laughs> anybody's yard. Um, but those are all things that we need to manage. Yes. So because yeah. we're a community. Right. So we are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about kids and technology. Right now, seventy nine. Dave Ramsey is heard here. Super Talk 1270. Hello and welcome back to the Extension Connection. You are joined today by the Burley County staff, two of us anyway. Two of us. Uh, my name is Amelia Dahl. I'm the 4-H Youth Development Agent. and Bruce Schmidt, Ag and Natural Resource. And uh, before the break, for the first half of the show, we talked a little bit about drought, drought. a little bit, and then about beetles. Beetles. And... and uh, and chemicals. And chemicals, just a little bit of everything. So now we're going to totally transition away from the egg the good side. Stuff. I don't know if I'd say it's the good stuff. <laughs> okay. The agricultural side of things, which is probably the good stuff for the majority of our audience listening. And we're going to talk a little bit about kids and technology and screens and devices because um, this past weekend, one of my friends posted something on Facebook about um, kids not having the ability to be bored really which i found was when i which i thought was very interesting um so i did a little research as any good researcher does right and um i i focused a little on how nowadays technology is just a part of our lives my generation mm -hmm. pretty much grew up with technology and my kids they're never going to know a time when you didn't have the internet in the palm of your hand. Exactly. Like, I remember when we first got internet in my house, and it was dial-up. Do you remember the horrible sounds <laughs> dial-up made? Like, <laughs> bee, bee. <laughs> I... And you got dropped all the time. Yes. I mean, it was just it was Yes, terrible. and nobody could call your house unless you yeah. weren't on the internet. And so I remember, like, having... We had a ginormous desktop tower and if you packed pillows around it you could stop the modem sounds because if you got on the internet while mom and dad were still sleeping it would wake them up and then you couldn't be on the internet anymore oh. and so i would pack the tower with pillows but then you had to remove the move it after you got logged on because the computer would overheat like it was voice of experience there, yes huh? yeah yes so now our kids are growing up with technology they know the internet is in the palm of your hand i have um an amazon alexa and a google home in my house and so literally i don't even have to have anything in my hand and i could say okay google spell this word or okay google define this one it helps a lot with household debates really oh yeah i mean you know now it's like and, you know, we've been going to the baseball games and somebody will ask a question and it's boom, you know. The Everybody busts out their out. fun. Uh, the, you know, it looks like it's going to rain. Boom. Boom. Pull it out. You know? <laughs> yep. And mine shows it's tracking to the south. I mean, it, that's exactly right. It's it's everywhere. and, and uh, So it's not necessarily a bad thing that it's everywhere, but it's how, that, how we use it when it's mm -hmm. everywhere and what kind of example we're setting for kids. And... Um, I know that I'm a culprit of some of these, but if you're watching TV and you're on your iPad or your phone, do you ever do that? Uh, maybe, yes. I do it all the time. I will fully admit it. Um, drives my husband crazy, but I can do two things at once if I'm doing that. Um, while 
you may think you're doing two things at once. Research shows that our brain isn't able to actually process both things at the same time. So if you have you ever watched... Now that is useful yeah. information right there because... Yeah. Um, yeah. I, because have you ever been watching a movie with somebody who's been sitting there on their phone? Yes. And then they'll be like, oh, wait, what just happened? And you're like, you're sitting right next to me. <laughs> you and, and you've got your phone in and your And you hand. have your phone in your hand. And so um, not only is that allowing or not allowing us to become fully engaged in the activity that we're participating in, but it's also setting an example for, the, for our kids that it's okay. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, I know that I've caught myself saying, William, who's my five and a half year old, don't do that. And then like an hour later, I catch myself doing it. And I'm like, man, being a parent is tough work. (laughs) Do as I say, not as I do. Um, But if you've ever done that or if you, um, where do you keep your phone when you sleep at night? Um, charged out, out in the living room area. Okay, so you keep it away yeah, from so your bed. My wife is... Right next right to her? Next. So there's a few things with that. One, you're teaching your kids it's okay to have electronic devices in your room. And two, studies have actually shown that even a phone that is in passive mode, you know, sitting next to your phone, even if you have the do not disturb, the um, radio waves actually interfere with your brain ability to go into a deep sleep okay and so we may think that we're sleeping well but our brain is constantly being kind of woke up by those radio waves but now with the you know we don't have a landline yep so you know to have a phone near us even if you put it across the room would be better yep because it's not right by your head because so many people put it on their nightstand right by their bed which is right where their head is and Mm -hmm. so it's really close to your head and so um i totally get it because we don't have a landline either right and i use my phone as my alarm clock um but i need to get a different like you can go buy an alarm clock at walmart for five dollars Yep, and they're reliable and they have the battery backup so right they're more reliable than a phone actually right because your phone I would wager to bet that everybody who uses their phone as an alarm clock plugs it in by their bed. Now, have you ever had your charger break or a cat through chew through your charger well, like I have? Not those extremes, but I've but, had where I'm pretty sure I plugged it in. And, and it dies, dies and it's so. dead and you don't have an alarm clock, yes. right? And so um, that's actually, if your argument is, well, that's my alarm clock, not a really valid, well, valid yeah. argument. Um, another thing that I've noticed a lot of is when we're in the car and so when we're in the car if you're not driving you're in the passenger seat usually scrolling right Mm -hmm. I know I am and this is something that I've been (laughs) trying to work on Um, but we expect our kids to sit in the back seat and not necessarily have anything and we wonder why True. they're they're back. There's, I have nothing to do now. There is there is a value in being bored, because bored being bored um, helps grow imagination, right? And True. through iman- imagination, True. we get innovation. So it's important that sometimes we let our kids be bored, just as it is important for us to be bored sometimes. So I will confess. I, I I closed up the office on July 3rd. Yep. And I was there till 5. And quite honestly, I was bored. Yeah, because cause nobody... Everybody thought we were closed. Right. And, um, you know, and it was just like, oh, I don't want to start any project because the day off tomorrow. And right. So I probably could have used that boredom to... To be innovative. Yeah. And creative. So... Um, next year. <laughs> next year. <laughs> Because next year, okay, we'll, next holiday, next holiday. <laughs> um, so those are all just things that we kind of lead by example without ever thinking that our kids are watching. So, do you um, ever interrupt family time in order to get up to the minute status updates on social media, or um, you you have your phone sitting over on the counter during dinner time and you get a text message? Well, see it again. I, I get this. I'm, I watch the Minnesota Twins, you know, and I have my phone set up to send me a score alert. Yeah. So it's just like, you know, we're, again, yesterday, family time, had uh, family from, some drove in from uh, Washington uh, State and some from Arizona. 
and we're talking away and then all of a sudden the phone vibrates and I look at it and oh, twins update. Yep. And it's an it's an impulse now to oh my phone went off, I need to You pick it up, right? Pick away. it up. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to adopt the mentality that if someone texted me, it's not as life threatening as if they would have called me. Right. Because my mom's not going to call me and tell me something super emergent. She's going to, she's not going to text me. She's going to pick up the phone and she's going to call me. And so that text message can wait until you're done with dinner. Because what we're showing kids is our in person relationship isn't as valuable as this relationship I have with my technology. So I think too, even if you, you know, if it's ringing as a, (laughs) as a phone call and, and you just, I can take this later. Yep. I think that's beneficial because the kids say, oh, yep. I got, I got priority I, over and there. And I've done that before, you know, where my phone's gone off and I've ignored it. And my son will go, mom, your phone's ringing. That's okay. I'm hanging out with you right now, mm-hmm. especially if it's work. Um, that's one of the things here. Do you interrupt family time to check your work email, um, answer a text message from work, answer a phone call from work? Um, it's important for us to disengage. Right, right. And we need, in order to be on vacation, you need to be on both vacation from the office and vacation from the technology. And I could say, I've, I've, since I've come back, I really need to break that chain. Because it's tough, isn't it? it? It is. You know, it's just like, and you're never away. I no. Mean, and it's. Well, it's just real quick. I'll just do this real quick. Yeah. Oh, somebody posted a picture. I know what this is. I'm just going to... Oh, a 4-H leader texted me at 10 o'clock at night. I'm just going to respond real quick. And Um, the message that you're sending to your, the people you're with. mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good points. So, um, Dr. Becker, who is a um, guy who did some research on technology, said that um, it's important to take a digital technology inventory. So take a close look at when, where, and how you're using digital technology within the various contexts of your life. Like how are you using at work? How are you using at home? Um, and possible explore possible ways to take healthy breaks from computers. So, you know, we in our office always have our computers in our meetings. Mm-hmm. But is there any reason that we couldn't leave our computers in the office and have a walking meeting? Good idea. So those kind of those are the kind of things that he's encouraging you to do. You know, look at where you use technology and is it really contributing to the betterment or is it being a detriment? Yeah. So we are going to take a quick break and when we come back, we'll talk a little more about technology. Right now, 84. On Twitter, Facebook, online, and YouTube. Supertalk1270.com. Hi, and welcome back to the Extension Connection. You are joined today by two of the staff from Burley County Extension. I'm Amelia Dahl, for a Juice Development Agent. And Bruce Schmidt, Ag and Natural Resource Agent. Um, before the break, we were talking about um, technology use and what kind of example we are setting for our kids and our adolescents in our life. And before that, we talked about Japanese beetles and yep. pesticides. Pesticide Safe Sand Program and... And drought. The drought. Which I think... Like, can you really have a conversation with anybody nowadays without the drought coming up? Oh, boy. It's, <laughs> it is there. Yep. It's just plain. It, it, you know, and part of the drought that we didn't talk about is that stress on the families. And, Definitely there. You know, it just would, I don't have any good answers other than, you know, be, be off, just be able to visit Yes. You know, let people know what you're you're concerned about. It can be a third party. It can be a ministerial. It can be, you know, anyone an extension wants, agent. Extension agent and and um, just just be open. You know, yes, it's and affecting everyone, especially um, farmers. If you're, you know, if you're short with your family, know that it's also affecting them. Um, they see the stress that you're in. Yeah. They see what's going on they know that the corn isn't as high as it's supposed to be this right. year and so it's, and I, I think of the youth you yes know, and the children uh, especially uh, um, their brains are sponges yeah. they're just absolute sponges and so, so as tough as it is you know make sure that those conversations that you're having about the crops not coming up not being able to make the payments those kind of things do those yeah. especially younger kids 
do those when those younger kids aren't around because you will be amazed at what even a five-year-old can regurgitate. Exactly. I mean, you know, and, and with the technology that's out there, you know, they are exposed to things that we didn't even, I didn't especially have. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, uh, they, can, they can, just by watching the news, uh, they can become stressed and exactly. and depressed uh, uh, because they hear the stories and how dry it is. And uh, so, you know, again, communicate, keep those lines open. And, and know that if you're stressed, they probably are too. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, if they see it on the news, they may have questions. But if they see that you're stressed about it, they probably think, well, he doesn't want to talk about this or my mom doesn't want to talk about this because it's stressful and so I just won't bring it up. Yeah. Um, and that's not healthy for anybody. Yeah. So, I mean, there's there's agencies, there's places out there where you can just visit. Yep. You know, exactly. speak your mind. Exactly. So for our last few minutes here on the show, we're going to um, finish up or delve more into mm -hmm. um, technology use and kids. And the current recommendations from the American Academy of Pediatrics discourages screen media exposure for children under age two. Um, that means TV, tablets, um, phones. Um, I know a lot of times I see parents at the grocery store, you know, they just want to get your grocery shopping done because grocery shopping with a two-year-old is ridiculous, right? Yes. 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 And so you pull up Mickey Mouse Clubhouse on your phone and you're just, here, you here do this. Um, and as easy as that is, it is not a recommended um, thing to do, especially by um, the American Academy of Pediatrics. And from a youth development standpoint, my recommendation is to get the kids involved in the shopping. Um, even kids, as soon as they can recognize colors, you can say, you know, grab a red pepper, pick up the yellow can off the shelf. And so if kids are engaged in the activity, they're less likely to be the whining hot mess that children are. Um, my other word of advice is avoid nap time. That's just a bad deal. Um, make sure that they're fed. <laughs> yes. Because I know I get hangry, and in a grocery store, when you're hungry, everything looks amazing. And we know as adults that we can't eat all the things or buy all the things, but a two, three, four, five, ten year old doesn't have the concept have yeah. of I can't eat all of these Oreos that are on the shelf because I'd have to pay for them and I don't have the money to do that. Right. And so helping those kids set yourself up and those kids up for success in the grocery store. Um, but that's my side tangent on technology. Um, studies show that adolescents spend a great deal of their screen time connecting with peers, which is no surprise, right? Because we have Snapchat, Instagram, we used oh, to have yeah. Vine, yep. Facebook's for us old people. Um, but they are texting and all of these, there's so many programs out there. Um, so my first word of advice is adults know what social media your kids are using um, and make sure you have clear defined rules rules about their social media use. Does that mean that they're friends with you on social media? Does that mean that you have their login information? Does that mean that every night you get a look at their phone? Those are all conversations that you need to have with your kids before they go and sign up for an Instagram account right. or a Snapchat right. account. Um, and there are some tricky things that kids do nowadays to get around those rules. Um, I'm not going to say them on the air because I know all of the, the kids are waited with bated breath around the radio listening to this you know maybe yes we don't I need would. to give them any ideas yeah. <laughs> um, but if you want to talk to somebody about it um, we have some great tools and programs in our office related to living online because really kids are whether we like it or not kids are living online and it's only going to stay i mean there's no way things it's not going to regress no no no. And so kids are interacting with people online, but it's um, what studies are finding is that it is decreasing the um, what your youth see as an importance on relationships in person. So if you've ever interacted with a kid and I've noticed this and not all kids, trust me, um, but who haven't ever really had interactions face to face with other human beings without a screen in front of them, you can definitely tell that there's some developmental 
things that are missing when they, I mean, they just get super awkward and they don't know how to respond. And we've been doing a lot of interviews in our office and the younger ones who come in were like, did you, did you ever talk to somebody in person or was it just always texting? You know, and and that still goes back to the beauty of our, our 4-H program. Yes. As the... Um, achievement days will be next week yes big week and the kids will have an opportunity to do interview judging which is visiting with a adult on what you did in a project and that is such a important life skill yes because on the flip side with all of these interviews we've been doing we could always tell the kids that were in 4-H yes or another extracurricular youth development focused and, uh, program you know in uh, Quite a, few, quite a few of the schools that I have visited, um, especially like the middle and the high school, and you talk about a certain student that was in 4-H, and they would go, yes, I could tell that just by the way they yep. interacted and, and we've had, with adults. Yeah, we've had parents come back to our office that say, I just did um, parent-teacher conferences, and the teacher said that she could tell that my daughter was involved in 4-H because she's more poised, Mm -hmm. she can better handle herself, and the new 4-H year is starting here very quickly, September 1, um, and because of the way the calendar falls, it will probably be the end of the week of Labor Day, um, but before you can enroll, but if you are interested in getting your kids involved in 4-H, give me a call at the office. My office number is 221-6865, and I'm starting a list, and so at the beginning of the year, we'll get a club set up for you, and then... um, get you going right at the start of the year, which yep. is the best time to get involved. And, and they can come out next week yes. and actually look at some of the items that the uh, 4-H'ers have made and and because there will be the public showing and that is going to be on Tuesday. No, Wednesday, Wednesday Thursday, Friday. and Friday morning. Yep. So, um, but Tuesday you can come out judging. and... Um, the first part of the night will be when the kids are in the arena getting judged, that interview judging that Bruce was talking about. And then um, while that's going on, starting at 630, we also have games outside. And those are open to anybody, the public. Um, bring your kids out. Have have a chat with a 4-H parent. They'll be able to tell you all sorts of things that their kids did. Um, and then at 8 o'clock, we reopen the building so everybody can come in and see what ribbons they got on their project. So that's always a cool, it's probably one of my favorite parts of Achievement Days, to see the kids like run over and see if their project got the grand or reserve or honorable mention. Yeah. And then on Wednesday, we have our small animal night, which is, this year we have a wide variety. We have cats, dogs, rabbits, chickens, a pot belly pig, pig yeah. a miniature horse, a parakeet, got a little bit of everything, and Furry Friends is going to be there for a meet and greet. Mm-hmm. And then Thursday we have our livestock show starting at 9 a.m., which is our big animals. And then that Saturday is our horse show down at Newins Arena. So we have a lot coming up next week. Um, hopefully you are able to make it out. And again, if you have any questions about what we talked about on the radio today, feel free to give us a call at 221-6865. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks for listening.